Hi there, welcome to Enchanted Fireside. My name is Dan and I'm one of the service technicians here. Today we're going to show you how to change an, an igniter element on your Mount Vernon Advanced Energy Combustion pellet stove. And that's what we have right here. So if we come around to the side and just take a look, this is the igniter element as it comes packaged in a little bag like this. And you have a little wing nut that comes with it. And as you might be familiar on the back of the stove, we have a side panel. And this will be need, need to be removed in order to get to those wires. And there's four screws that hold this panel on. And as you can see, three of them here and one on the bottom. And just a regular Phillips head screwdriver will take these out. This kind of just slides right off the back like that. The same panel that can be removed to access those igniter wires. If you come to the right side of your insert, and you just, up in the top here, there's a little clip that you pull towards you. The top is going to come off, and then you're going to lift vertically from the panel. And that will reveal those same two wires that we're going to show you on the stove model when removing your igniter from the stove. Just not to pull from the wire, you want to pull from the clip. Just like that, and we're going to leave those hanging. We'll come back to the front of the stove here. And there's two ways to go about doing this. You can actually open the door and remove your fire pot from the uh, false bottom here. And if you so choose to do that, this bolt here and this bolt here will need to be removed. But for our service technicians, the way we do it is actually from the ash pan on the bottom of the stove. So that's the way we're going to show you. So you'll remove your ash pan just as if you were to clean it. We'll set that aside. You have an igniter slot where that's, that sits inside. And you'll see those two wires right up inside there. That's what you're looking at right now. And a little wing nut. So we're going to just loosen that wing nut by hand. You don't have to remove it completely, just to the point where it's loose. And then you're going to slide that igniter element out of the slot to the right, just like that. Up inside the ash pan compartment, the wires are connected to a clip. But they're basically on a U-shaped clip that they just need to be removed from that in order to pull the wires through the back of the stove. Now we have those wires disconnected. And as you can see, if we get a better angle here, on the back corner of the ash pan, there's a little hole where those wires run through. And we're just going to pull those wires right through that big. And there we are. And what I like to do is I'm going to put that wing nut back into the slot before I install the igniter. And you can just tighten it down a few turns. You don't have to go crazy. And we're going to reverse the way that we put it with that we took it out. So we'll go back under, and the, the igniter element is going to sit with the wing nut on the bottom side of it. And it's going to slide right back into that slot. At this point, you can tighten the wing nut once you have it in place. You don't have to go crazy, you can just get it nice and snug. That should be good there. And like we had taken them out of that little U-shaped clip before, we're going to slide them right back into it. Better. Just make sure when you close your ash pan, it does make a gasketed seal. Red clip connectors, and it doesn't make any difference which way they connect, or which ones they connect to. But you're just going to plug those back in, make sure they're nice and firm. And that reconnects your igniter. And to finish things up, we're going to reinstall that side panel. Again, we can slide that right into place. 
And I like to just get the screws started by hand. You can kind of line up the holes. And just don't forget to do this bottom one as well. And then we're going to take our Phillips head screwdriver, tighten those down. Now for viewing purposes, we have this up on a lift so that we can all see it. But when you're in your home, you may have to get down on the ground to be able to do this. Once those are nice and snug, you have successfully completed an igniter install.